Hey guys, how's it going? I'm happy to be here. This is How to Kick Ass with Both Feet. No one-footed ass kicking allowed, as my dear friend Zach used to tell me. So welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I have committed to posting for a full year at least, um, every Saturday. You will notice that today is Friday, but I'm not going to be around Saturday, or I don't know exactly when I'm going to be around. So to honor my commitment, I'm doing this shit a little bit early to get it done. One thing that I promised you was to show you some of the artwork that I'm going to be uh, offering as a little treat to celebrate 100 subscribers. Unfortunately, it's not finished, but I did make progress on it today, so I'm going to give you a little sneak peeker, um, and then my goal is to have it finished um, for next week, and possibly even have the prints made next week. Uh, I don't know for sure if I can commit to that, but I think I can have this done in a week. Let's just fucking go for it. Like, yeah, this shit's going to be done for the next video, but here's the sneak peek. Are you ready? Oh my God, it's a bunch of eyeballs, a hundred. See what I did there? And the phrase, yes, thank you. So I'll talk more about the uh, meaning and the completed product when it's complete, but I'm super stoked to offer this to you guys and I think it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a hoot. Um, I think you should start telling me if you're interested, if you want one. What I'm going to do is have them printed into postcard size prints for the freebie. For the first hundred who are interested, I'm going to just send them out. So I think the best way to do this would be to just shoot me an email. Um, you can just do amandagoldmakesart at gmail. Email me and say, hell yeah, I want a freaking postcard and uh, send me your address and I will send that to you. And then I think I'm also gonna do like maybe bigger color versions and I'll have those puppies for sale. So uh, looking forward to sharing that with you and thank you for your interest and the inspiration. So what I have for you today is sort of a reflection. I've been kind of thinking about how these uh, videos will go and I've actually made myself this really amazing nerdy spreadsheet um, so I kind of have a feel for a theme for each month and I know exactly what day I'm going to post and what I'm going to share about and stuff like that. And so today I was thinking, I just wanted to share with you some reflections I've had about the last decade. I get super jazzed about the new year. I get really stoked about that energy and the, not so much the goal setting and resolutions, but I like that idea of like reflection and setting an intention and perhaps a theme for the year. I've done that. And kind of ruminating on the change to a whole new decade has been really interesting for me, especially since how my decade started versus how it wrapped up in 2019 and how 2020 is starting is so radically different. How much has transformed and changed for me? I'm like a completely different person. Um, so 10 years ago, I was 28 years old and I was 33, four years away from rock bottom. So I'm sober, um, I'm in recovery. I used to do a shit ton of drugs and alcohol and my life was a shit show for a really long time. And, um, you know, I've been homeless. I've been in abusive relationships. I struggled with terribly low self-esteem, depression, suicidal thoughts, things like that. And, um, it showed. <laughs> so when I, when this decade started, um, I was living in a studio apartment here in Denver and just fucked up all the time. My drinking always looked like blackout drinking, um, getting in fights, lots of like crying and emotional displays or rage outs or whatever. Um, somewhere around 30, I um, was really losing it. Um, I became homeless. I was in the most abusive relationship uh, and I would suffer through that for two years until I got sober. And actually when I got sober, I still had to put up with that relationship for another six months before I figured out how to um, get out of it. So, um, yeah, it was a shit show. So basically from 28 to 32 was the, the major decline. And then at 32, I got sober. Thank God. Hallelujah. And then things started to be in this upward trajectory. And now I feel like I'm at this interesting point where things are not anywhere near where I want them to be materially. Um, but so much has happened on the inside. I feel like I'm really poised to start making the bigger changes in my outer world. So um, what I mean to say there is just like, I have big dreams for myself where I'd like to move out of the apartment with the noisy neighbors and maybe own my own home. Well, definitely I would, I think I would like to own, I keep saying like definitely kind of maybe, I don't know. It's still a big stretch. Like it's still a big identity stretch to consider myself as the person who's capable of these bigger, like more adult 
things, like earning the kind of money I want to earn and um, being a homeowner. I think my wishy-washiness there is part, like, I've never imagined it would be even possible for me to be a homeowner. I mean, let's be real. I thought I was going to be dead a long time ago. And, I, and every year that I survived, I kept thinking, well, okay, this year, surely I won't make it. I didn't want to make it. So not only am I wrapping my mind around maybe like, oh yeah, I could be a car owner again, or maybe I could own a home, but I'm also still kind of wrapping my mind around the fact that I'm alive and I love it. And hopefully if, if all goes according to plan, no guarantees, but hopefully I got a lot of amazing years to live on this earth. So there's sort of that cognitive dissonance happening where it's just like accepting like, yes, I'm here. I belong here. Uh, life is good. It's it's for me. Like, <laughs> you know, I don't, I'm sure some of you can relate to that. At any rate, like, uh, I'm ready to, tra- like, so much internally has transformed. So many beautiful things are happening um, with my heart and my mind and my thinking and beliefs and my spiritual life. And now I'm really ready to start, like, crushing it in the material world. So I'm ready to fucking start earning that money. I'm ready to start creating a business for myself. I'm ready to get my art out there. I'm ready to help other people. I want a car again. I want a house. I want the things, you know, like, I want to travel. I have all this um, excitement and desire. And I'm learning that that is good. And it's life expressing itself through me. And I'm ready to, like, claim that for myself. And that's what a lot of this video is going to be. These videos are going to be about is how to you, how do you, allow yourself to continue to develop and grow and to want what you want and how do you reconcile like wanting to be rich with also being a spiritual person and um how do you keep priorities in line like obviously happiness doesn't have to do with the material stuff there's plenty of people that have millions of dollars that are miserable and there's plenty of people that are in poverty and are super happy you look yours truly like um I'm still zero income. I still sweat like where rent money is coming from, where groceries are coming from. I utilized a food bank yesterday. Uh, I applied for food stamps. I'm on Medicaid. Like these are things I'm working through. Um, but I'm a very happy, fulfilled person and I have love in my life. Um, so yeah, part of this too is just reflecting on the decade and I wanted to share some of the wins. And I also wanted to share like, okay, so I journal every morning. I'm a big fan of the morning pages a la Julia Cameron and the artist's way. Um, so every morning, and I've been doing this since 2011 or earlier, um, every morning, first thing I write three pages, stream of consciousness, just getting it out on the page, writing. And so it's been really informative to look back on uh, journals if I need like a boost or if I need to remember what stuff was like. And I find the journals before I got sober to be very fascinating, especially when I'm getting down on myself about not having the material things that I want. I get impatient. I think like, oh, I'm five, six years sober I should have these things like, and you know, I struggle with feeling like a failure or struggle with shame that I don't have these things that a 38 year old woman should have, whatever that means, you know, when I look back in my journals, when I was like begging whatever I thought was out there or begging myself or trying to figure out a way out of addiction and the hell of that addiction, I wasn't praying for a car or for money or this great job or, or the material things I was praying for fucking serenity. I was praying for the power to say no. I was praying for the, um, you know, the confidence to live my life without needing that external shit, you know? And in that sense, I feel like a huge success because today, like I'm saying, the internal world has radically transformed. It went from just a fucking decrepit, rotting graveyard of sadness to this thriving, beautiful garden that's just growing and growing and growing. And I'm so grateful for that. I didn't do it alone. I have a spiritual practice. I have a connection to a power bigger than myself and it's fucking working and it's awesome. And so I'm really aware of that transformation and those gifts that you can't like measure, you can't go buy stuff with, but I feel rich in that sense. Right. Um, And then, you know, it's important too when we're striving for more, like part of the way we stay happy while we're doing that and and appreciate what we have and stay in this attitude of gratitude is to celebrate the wins. Like I always used to just breeze by, like part of what happens for for me, um, getting sober at the age of 32, I felt like I had a lot of catching up to do and I had a lot of remorse around what I was calling wasted time. Um, I believe that there is no such thing as wasted time now, but, you know, I still grew up in a culture and a society that kind of makes us think that our life is on this linear trajectory and we're supposed to hit these certain milestones to be considered a success or whatever. I'm using a lot of these today, sorry. (laughs) They're just flying around. Uh, (laughs) uh, So anyways, um, oh shit, what, I lost my train of thought. Well, I was just talking about like milestones and sweating that and stuff. Oh, and it's important to um, honor 
you're, when you do have achievements, when you do have successes, and maybe you need to redefine things, or maybe you need to really look, but they are there. Um, and it's important to assess them on like your life. Like we can't compare ourselves to other people and this notion that there's just this one right way to be an adult or a success in the world is totally bogus. Um, but I can share some wins, like uh, a couple years into sobriety, I got this great job doing social work and helping people experiencing chronic homelessness. And so that was really cool. And I got promoted within that job and that was fun. I got a scholarship to go to DC to this conference about homelessness and how to solve it. And so that was rad. I've had amazing opportunities working for different nonprofits and um, I've had speaking opportunities that have been mind blowing and super fun. Lots of um, opportunities to give back to others. I've had some really rad achievements with my art, like getting to paint some murals and work with other artists and just having lots of fun there and exploring different mediums. And I graduated from college. Da, 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 da. That was a really big one for me. Um, that happened last month and it was pretty badass because I had tried to do it like five, six times before and big surprise, it's a lot easier when you're doing it sober. Although it was still stressful as hell. Maybe even more so because I didn't have a way to like numb out or check out, but I fucking did it and it was awesome. Also, I have an amazing boyfriend. We've been dating for two months and we're super in love. So that's really fun. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything. Uh, I just wanted to say like, keep on keeping on and remember that there's different levels of success and the really most important stuff is how does your heart feel and where is your joy and all the material stuff will come when it's ready and like and it's a lot easier to work for that shit and like go for it and attract it to you when you're in that like great space of feeling good about yourself and life in the world and it is possible to feel that way even in poverty even with zero dollars even without a car you know, and there are times when you might feel like a scrub or you might feel like less than, but you're not, you are awesome and you're crushing it and we are going to achieve great things together. So thanks for being here. I will see you next week with the completed version of your special artwork that you're going to get. I think it's going to be really cool. I think that's it. I uh, hope this was good for you. It was good for me. All right. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye.